as the days go by, he looks for more kicks, more escape from the troubles he brings on himself. Each time he feels the need for kicks or he's troubled, he returns to marijuana. He knows that marijuana isn't physically addicting. He doesn't know he's become psychologically dependent on it. But he's not worried. He knows he can handle it. In time, the continued use of marijuana causes psychic and physiological changes in his body. While under the influence of marijuana, his blood pressure increases. He feels unusual hunger and his central nervous system changes. His perception of depth and dimensions is radically changed. A low curb appears as a precipice. With a distortion of sight and sound, time is suspended. Fast action appears slow. The whole world is distorted. Angry, resentful, humiliated, sinking into the pit of despair, and he needs help to pull himself out. But where should he look for it? Whom should he ask? The coach won't give him a break. The teacher? Ah, he's already failed him, so why keep on with studies? His parents? They don't understand anything. Five or six puffs. A dream world beckons. Reality is left behind. But problems aren't solved. Marijuana is also smoked. The reefer, as it is sometimes, like an ordinary hand-rolled cigarette. But it is smoked differently. Large quantities of air are inhaled simultaneously with the smoke, so that the stomach will absorb a high percentage of the narcotic. Marijuana is the most prevalent narcotic among juveniles. The pattern of escape is established. Many then try heroin. The step to narcotic addiction is short. Even for medical uses, has been banned in the United States since 1925. Every day, the cost of his habit rises. $80, $90, $100 a day and more. Every day, he must have increasing amounts of the drug. To get it, he will lie, steal, murder, even trap the innocent. The outfit that he uses is the drug addict's only friend. With it, he can exist in his living hell until the next fix. Without it, he will suffer the unbearable tortures of withdrawal from the drug. To prepare the venom for his bloodstream, he empties heroin onto the spoon. Every grain is precious and cannot be spilled or wasted. A few drops of water are added to make a solution. Then the small wad of cotton, usually dirty, is placed on the spoon to serve as a filter. The solution is then drawn through the cotton filter and into the needle. This cotton is saved and used again and again. For if the addict is ever caught without the drug, he can cook the cottons and squeeze out a small amount. This is it then, the big time, the main line, the high point of every drug addict's existence. Of every thousand hikes who ride the toboggan to hell, only a few ever get on. Of course, Pete is careful not to let John see the actual needle pop that is hidden, ignored, bypassed. Instead, only the fun, the kicks, the real blast is played up. The idea of a real kick without getting hooked takes hold. John isn't afraid, and he certainly isn't square. The chain reaction has reached the end of the line. He's handled alcohol, goofballs, marijuana. Now he's positive he can handle one little pop. But something seems to have gone wrong. The excuse of, it can't happen to me, was all right for the first pop and the second and the third. But the more heroin he shoots, the more tolerance his body builds. And the more he needs. He needs a shot now and he needs it badly. 
But this is the last one. After he's feeling better, he'll quit. Never touch the stuff again.